is Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. Welcome to my studio again. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did a little organizational tour talking about ribbon, and y'all enjoyed it so much and had a bunch of questions and said, please do more. So today, I'm inviting you back into the studio, and we're going to talk about the most requested item on your list, which was paper organization. Now, listen guys, I have a lot of paper. I've been paper crafting for 15 years now, 18 years, long time. And I love paper, I've loved paper since I was a little girl. So you have to find a way to organize your paper. Now, before we get into what I do, let me just say this to you. I'm me. I like things organized, put away, surfaces cleared off as much as possible. I get distracted if there's too much going on around me. So I tend to keep my studio really organized. But one of my best friends who I started out crafting with was the exact opposite of me. She couldn't create unless she had everything out where she could see it. So you figure out who you are. Are you like me? You like things neat, tidy, put away? Are you like her? You like everything out where you can see it? Or are you somewhere in between? The most important thing that I want to tell you about keeping your studio organized, your craft space organized, is clean up after every project. Have a home for things and put them away. I can sometimes be in the studio for an eight or 10 hour day if I'm working on a deadline, but I do not leave this room unless I've cleared my desk area and I've put things away where they go. Because that way, two things. When I walk in first thing in the morning the next day, I'm not overwhelmed by what I find. And second thing is I can always find things. Stuff doesn't pile up and I don't end up going, I know I had this somewhere, where did I put it? And pulling your hair out. So um, now if I'm in the middle of a project and I didn't get it finished, I will neatly lay it out in piles on my desk. I do do that but I never have more than one project going at a time, and I never start a new project until I put everything from the old project away. I've just found that if you take the extra five to 10 minutes at the end of every project to put things away where they go and clean up, that you don't get overwhelmed. I don't have pi I can't work with piles of stuff on my floor. I can't work with piles of stuff on my desk. Um, keep everything neat and tidy. So to do that, you have to create some systems to help you. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today with paper. So let me take this camera down and we'll get into the studio and we'll look at some of the methods that I use to help me keep organized. So don't go away, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, what you're looking at is my work desk. This is our old kitchen table that my husband raised up with, um, Actually, it's a toilet flange and PVC pipe to make really sturdy legs. And then he anchored it into the wall for me. It's large and I have two sides. One is my work side, the other is my die cutting side. So right beside this little area, I have one of these little rolly carts, which I love. And in the rolly cart, I have this little cabinet organizer. I picked this up at a yard sale for a quarter. And this is where I keep my cardstock scraps. And you can see I have them organized by color. This way, when I need a color, I can find it quickly. I also have my, my hot glue gun, my glue sticks, and some other tools, funnel trays, things like that that I use often. And I have hand sanitizer in there. Not because I'm germophobic, but because hand sanitizer is the quickest way to clean glue off your scissor blades or your work mat. It just dissolves the adhesive and it cleans right up. So there's a little free tip for you. I have cutting tools underneath and embossing powder. So everything that I would use to create a project, distress inks, all of that, really close at hand. This is my other storage area this is for papers that are too wide to fit in that little organizer so i keep that on my desk so it's handy then below the desk below the work desk are these iris carts and i had to take the wheels off of them to make them fit but in these carts and i know this is an odd angle i'm trying to get it better here 
this is where it would be handy to have a videographer. <laughs> so in these bins, those are all my Stamparia papers and I have them organized in alphabetical order. So I know if, for instance, I want to work with sunflower art, it's gonna be in the cart on the right, probably the second drawer down. I don't put the names of the collections and labels on the cart because um, that changes, right? You use something up and then it's gone. So on my work desk, this is how I store my papers. So just give me a second here. So years ago, um, before COVID, when Darius was still operating and you could go to Darius and you could order, they had these little plastic portfolios. And I think you got three of them in a package for like when they went on sale for like a dollar. They're a nice heavy vinyl plastic. They've got these little closures and some of mine have broken over the years but I love to organize a paper collection in here. And I will put the entire collection in. I will put in 12 by 12, six by sixes, eight by eights, um, die cuts, chipboard, ephemera, because then everything I want is in there. And I'll just show you, this is Stamparia Flower Alphabet. And this is one of a, a collection I have loved for years. It's been out for a long, long time. And this is how I organize it. I have multiple sets of this paper and I've cut into different parts of it for different things. I always keep the cover because you can get great little bookmarks and tags and things off of there. But I put the papers from the different collections together and this whole stack is whole sheets or almost whole sheets. So the reason I do that is that it will fit neat and tidy in here, all right? So I just slip this in here. Then what do I do with the scraps? Well, when I have pieces left over from a project, I group them together by color, and I either hook them with a paper clip or I put them in an envelope. These were all fairly good sized pieces, so I use the paper clip method. The reason I do it by color is because then if I'm looking for a piece to fill in on a project, I can find that grouping. Then I also put large images, like these are all the postcard images together with a paper clip. These are small, these are perfect like for stamping on. Here's all the tags, here's all the bookmarks, here's all the small images. And this makes it very easy. I can lay these on my desk, the paper clips hold them together, I can go through them quickly, I can find what I need. And then I just clip them back together and put them away at the end of the day just like that so for me this works really really well now i don't know if you can get these but if you go to like scrapbook.com totally tiffany makes some really cool folders which i also love and i have a bunch of those because this is how i store all my paper if you don't have these you can buy these ginormous like 14 by you know 13 inch uh plastic ziploc bags and those work well too I just like these because they look great and they really protect the paper. So that is this aspect of what I do. Now I want to show you how I store my card stock. So this is just a few steps away from where I work. My husband built this little cover for an iris cart and added a shelf. And this is where I keep all my neutral colored card stocks. Now, before you judge me for having too much paper, Remember, this is what I do for my living. This is my full-time job. And I, I buy these things when they are on sale and I stock up. Neutrals are something I use all the time. Craft, cream, white, black, brown. So that's what I keep in there. And then for the rest of my card stock, this is a file cabinet. And I'm gonna try to back up so you can see the whole thing. And you can see the beautiful artwork that my granddaughter made for me. This is solid wood. I'm not sure when this thing was made, but it's a beast. And I picked it up at a yard sale, no kidding guys, for $10. And look how great this is. This is how I store all my colored card stock. And yes, I Roy G. Bived it. In other words, I did it like the colors of the rainbow. So everything is together, starting out with the palest pink, and going all the way back to the deepest purple. And I use these little plastic dividers that came in, um, 
I think these are card boxes that you can get at Michael's and Joann's online. And I'll show you one of those in another, um, in another video. But this makes it that all my reds are together, all my yellows are together, all my blue greens are together, all my blues are together, purples like that, and I can find things very quickly. And when I don't use a complete piece, in a project, that's when it goes into one of those scrap bins that I showed you. So I love this guy. And then in the drawers below, I keep other things like, uh, well, you know, I do a lot of tutorials for Button Farm Club, so I'll keep copies of my tutorials in there and et cetera and so forth, business files, all of that. But I love this drawer and I love this storage solution for colored card stuff. All right, so I have a fairly small room. It's only about 10 by, maybe 10 actual floor space and I've got that little cutaway where the window and my sewing table are and you can see I have iris carts all over there I have iris carts under my main work desk um, and I keep like that's all my cartabella and echo park over there so I tend to keep families together that's the way my brain works um, and I and I that way I can find what I'm looking for if I know I want a certain vibe for a certain project but then I also have these two skinny closets. They are really skinny, one on either side, and that's where I store the bulk of my paper, so I'll show you that. I'm not sure how well you can see. It's a little bit dark in this closet. It does not have a light. But these are all totally Tiffany paper storage bins. And again, I've grouped my papers by family. I'll try to come in close enough so that you can see. Like, you're looking at all my photo play papers on this shelf, along with their folios and dies. Then down on this shelf is all my Prima papers. And I've got some blue fern in there, too. And on the bottom shelf, I have 12 by 12 cardstock and some random older collections. So my husband put these shelves in for me when we bought the house. And then up above, I have some stamp storage, which we'll talk about another time, and then some miscellaneous storage, which we'll talk about another time. So this is the closet on the right. And here we are, closet on the left, very, very similar. Up at the very top, I have all my authentique. And then down a row, that's all my Christmas papers from various suppliers and Heartfelt Creations. And then I have my Heartfelt Creations stamps and dies. A little tiered organizer that we'll look at another time and some more organizers that we'll look at another time. So that is my basic paper storage. I hope I shared some ideas for storage and organization of your paper that makes sense to you. Again, have a system. Whatever your system is, have a system. That way you don't lose precious product, double order. I've done all of that, trust me. And it took me a while to figure out what worked for me. And it's okay that it takes a while and you can change it whenever you need to. So thanks for joining me in my studio to take a look at how I store my papers. I'm wishing you joy and creativity and happy paper crafting from Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Go get your craft done. Bye.